So here's the Salesforce Certified Business Analyst exam guide on Trailhead. I'll link to this in the resources section. And as with most exam guides, this is divided up into several different areas in the contents section. The thing I want to focus on is related to the exam outline because that corresponds with how I've structured this course. You'll find individual sections of the course for each of the six knowledge areas on this exam. Those knowledge areas are customer discovery, collaboration with stakeholders, business process mapping, requirements, user stories, and finally user acceptance. And you'll notice as well that the percentage weighting of each of the knowledge areas are represented here as well, such as customer discovery at 17% towards your total score on the exam. Now, a few things you will notice as you scroll up passing score on this exam. Please note a recent update since this filmed. The passing score has been increased by Salesforce to now be 72%. So you will need to score a 72 or higher on the exam to pass. There will be 60 multiple choice or multiple select questions on the exam plus five non-score questions. You'll have 105 minutes to complete the exam. And here's information around registration costs of $200 USD as well as retake fees of $100. And you'll find other information related to this exam such as the audience description and who it's intended for such as ideally you would have two years of business analyst experience as well as two years of Salesforce platform experience. It's my hope that if you have the Salesforce admin certification and take this course that you should be able to pass this particular certification for business analysts as well. One additional thing to highlight is that in order to be able to register for the business analyst certification exam you do need to be a current credential holder for the Salesforce Certified Administrator credential that is a prerequisite for this particular exam. And so diving into the particular exam outline, each of these knowledge areas are expandable to expose different learning objectives. Now you'll find inside of each learning objective several different topics. And so it's not just a matter of taking into account six learning objectives, but inside of here, you'll find multiple topics inside of a single learning objective or bullet point. Once we get out of this introductory section, we'll be diving into customer discovery and we will be talking about business strategies, goals, initiatives, and challenges to define the scope of business analysis as well as the contents found in the other learning objectives as well. There'll be a lot of talk around establishing current state, the implementation life cycle, as well as analyzing a customer's Salesforce environment to identify opportunities and constraints as well as being able to recommend solutions to a business based on your knowledge of Salesforce capabilities. We'll then, in the next several sections of the course, dive into the other knowledge areas. And you'll see here that there's several different learning objectives in each. And so beyond customer discovery, a large section of the course, which accounts for almost a quarter of your passing score, is collaboration with stakeholders. It is here that we'll be getting into the elicitation of business needs from stakeholders, as well as getting agreement on future state design and much more. And then we get into process mapping. This is a really interesting section where I take you through the process of learning and doing process mapping. There'll be some different tools that I'll share with you on how to do that and give you some hands-on experience. And once we've got business processing under our belts, then we'll be dealing with requirements such as the difference between requirements versus user stories and how to prioritize existing requirements and identify new requirements to develop the future state as well as starting to talk about documentation in a version controlled repository. Towards the tail end of the exam, we get into user stories. We'll learn the difference between acceptance criteria versus definition of done, as well as more around documentation of those user stories as well in a version controlled repository to manage scope. So you see a lot around trying to battle scope creep and that's represented typically in the last learning objective in several of these knowledge areas, as you see. And then finally, the final piece would be that of user acceptance, often referred to as UAT or user acceptance testing. We'll be talking about how to define and prepare the user acceptance test plan, as well as how to guide UAT and manage the results to determine whether the solution meets the requirements. And then finally, given a scenario, make a go or no go release decision when new business or technical issues arise. So also you'll notice that there is a trail mix that will help you prepare for this credential as well in addition to my video course that you're in here. And so in the next lesson I want to introduce you to this trail mix.